This is a little explanation of how to troubleshoot a basic system, such as a boost pump. I know the drawing's not very great, but uh, it does give you an idea of what goes on. So there's basically three reasons why a boost pump or a light bulb, or for that factor, any, any electrical component would not work. So most people think of two reasons. One is electrical and one is mechanical. So they say that electrically it has no power, it has no ground, whatever it is, so those are electrical reasons. But then you have mechanical also. You also have reasons where the system failed, let's say a pump was uh, locked up, uh, is grinded to a halt, and there's many reasons why mechanically it would not work. But a lot of the mechanical reasons, you would not know what it is because, well, it's all inside. Unless you have x-ray vision, you're not gonna see what's going on inside. But the one that a lot of people negate and kind of overlook is factor number one. And that's the one, in my experience, where a lot of people overlook it, and it's a simple fix to most of the problems that are, fa that are facing aircraft technicians out there. And that's human factors. What that means is, let's say a pilot turned on a boost pump switch, but instead of turning the boost pump switch, there was another switch next to it. And that was, let's say, a shutoff valve. And that shutoff valve switch was manipulated instead of the boost pump switch. Now in a cockpit where there's a lot of switches and, and uh, controls, you might be so accustomed to doing things a certain way, but then once in a while you reach over and you f flip the wrong switch without knowing it. You become complacent, one of the human factors as well. And uh, with that, you end up actually making a mistake and you write up the wrong item. So let's say you wanted to make a landing and you wanted to turn on the landing lights, but then you turned on the rotating beacon, which should be on already, but let's just say that we did and you write up landing lights. Well, of course, a technician that's gonna come up there, like myself, would come up there and turn on the lights, off check it, it's good, because there was nothing wrong with it. So that's human factors. So where you, the human, is actually inducing or creating an actual problem, which really didn't exist. So you can actually go ahead and uh, remedy that by finding a proper maintenance manual reference and uh, signing it off, really. The other is electrical. Electrical, there's two ways. Electrical means that, well, Electrically, it's not working. We're not sure of mechanical yet because, well, like I said, there is no way to check mechanical at this moment because you cannot see what's going on inside the actual load. So electrical, what makes electrical work? So there's two parts. For every electrical system to work, it comes to two parts, okay? So you have either power or you have ground. Those are the two ways electrically that it would not work, only two reasons. Okay. So if you think about this factor or this process of troubleshooting, what does troubleshooting really mean? Troubleshooting means just this little information here. Okay. This is what troubleshooting really, really stands for in my opinion. I mean, you're going to get a lot of definitions from different people, but in my opinion, it's this process of elimination. And that's it. Okay. That's what you're doing because you started out with human factors then you're gonna move on to electrical, then you're gonna to try to see mechanically if it's good. So you can actually check human factors that go, well, you, you, know, you can kind of see what's going on. Electrical, you're gonna to have to take a multimeter and find out what's going on with the actual system. And then mechanical means, well, if you have human factors and electrical out of the way, then the only possibility is mechanical. So what's gonna to happen to power and ground? Well, every system like over here, our little primitive boost pump, and don't ask me what that is because that's supposed to be a terminal post, but we're gonna go with that anyway. So here's the bus, circuit breaker, single pole, single throw switch, a terminal post connecting the, uh, the, the switch to the uh, actual boost pump, and then ground for the actual boost pump. In this case, if you're missing this ground, if it's not there, that means the pump will not work. On this side, if there's no power coming in, the boost pump will not work. So what's more important, the power or the ground? Well, neither, they're both important. Without either one, the boost pump will not work. So if you don't have ground, or if you don't have power on this side, the boost pump simply will not work. Now we can talk about ground seeking circuit, power seeking circuit later on, that's a different day. But for now, let's just say you want to troubleshoot the boost pump, because we tried human factors already, that didn't re really lead us anywhere. So now we're gonna to try to actually troubleshoot the boost pump via electrical means. So what does the boost pump need? It needs power and it needs ground. So usually what I do is uh, I have the meter set up. I don't have a meter at this point, but later on I will actually show you on a, a real device how this goes. But let's say you check ground. What do you want to do to ground? 
you want to set the meter to resistance and you want to measure if this wire from here connected to actually to the physical ground, any ground, any known designated ground, and we'll discuss what designated ground means later on also. You connect this to the meter and you want to set it to resistance. Why do you want to measure resistance? Because you want to measure how good is this connection from here to a ground. How good is this wire? That's what you're trying to see. You want to see how good is this wire going from, uh, from the actual component to a physical ground. What should you read when you check the meter? Well, when you have the red lead here, black lead here, or vice versa in this case, it doesn't really matter, what you're supposed to be reading is 0, 0.0 ohms. What, what does that mean? That means there is no resistance on the wire from here to here. And you shouldn't have any resistance because if it's a good ground, if it has a good connection, you should not have any resistance at all. Any resistance means that the wire is not in good condition and maybe the ground is not properly mated, which means you should troubleshoot the ground wire a little bit more. On the other side, let's say if this side, the ground, is good, okay, let's just put a little highlighter here so that that's good. Well, so that is actually good. The ground side is good. Now we're going to have to check the power. Now how do we check power? Power is very simple. Red lead goes to power. Black lead goes to ground. Okay, goes to ground. So you're going to take your red lead of the multimeter and you're going to put it to the actual power. And then you're going to go to a ground over here. And you're going to actually measure power to ground. And this should read whatever system voltage it is. So this is the 28 volt DC bus. You should be reading 28 volt DC here when you check it. Now, whether this could be a cannon plug or actual uh, uh, physical connection or soldered connection, that really depends on the system. So once you have 28 volt DC here, if there is power here, there is ground here, well, that just went over the electrical part, which means it is not human factor, it is not electrical, which means it is mechanical. In other words, the boost pump actually failed. But let's say if there is no power over here. If there is no power over here, that means, well, whatever came from here, came through there, the switch is closed at this point, I forgot to show you that. Switch is closed, so it's not open anymore. Went through the terminal strip and then made it here. But it didn't happen. So what should you do? Should you go all the way back over here? No, you shouldn't. What you should do is, you should go somewhere in the middle. And in this case, in a long circuit, let's just say, this is the middle, right here. All right, this little terminal post right here is the middle. So since you checked here and you had no power, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move back and check over here. If there is power over here, again, black on power, I mean, sorry, what did I say? Red on power, black on ground, you're gonna set the meter up in that fashion with the meter selected 28 volt DC. In other words, it could be selected anywhere higher to 28 volt DC, which is like 200 volts DC. So it would read anywhere from zero to 200. In that case, 28 is actually in the middle, of course. So you're gonna read that. And um, if you read voltage over here, that means you found 28 volt DC at this location. So what does that mean? That means the electrons came through the switch, through the circuit breaker, and it came from the bus. So it actually made its trip and went through the wire, went through the circuit breaker, went through the switch, came through this wire and is waiting over here at this terminal strip. From the terminal strip, it actually left. But then somehow, it didn't make it to the boost pump. So that kind of gives you a hint, a process of elimination where you said, all right, fine, you know what? I had the ground, I was checking power, I didn't have power at the boost pump, but when I went back to the terminal strip, I had power. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is actually in this little area here. All right? Something happened between that area. What happened? Well, we don't know. How could you figure it out? Well, you gotta check the quality of the wire again, or the connection between the terminal strip and the boost pump itself. In that case, we're gonna do what we did over here, which is, again, a resistance check. You're gonna take the resistance check from the actual terminal strip to here. So you're gonna put the meter there again, between those two locations, and you're gonna check for resistance. And if that resistance is good, it should read the same as this, 0.0, .0 close to zero as possible. But in this case, more than likely what happened is there was a break in the wire, a break, okay? A break in the wire. So in that case, the break actually is gonna read not 0.00, .00 it'll be, well, sometimes, point, it'll be read as an open load like this, or it might read open load, or it might be um, showing uh, various other things depending on the meter. So if you see open load, 
Well, that means it's no good. Another way you can see it is that the meter doesn't move. So it'll just show you a one, right? So if it shows you a one or open load or OL, whatever it is, it means actually there's an open between the wire and then you found the problem. So it is electrical. So let's go back to mechanical for a minute. So mechanical, what that means is if you fix the electrical, now the power is fixed, you fix this wire, and depending on the wiring manual, the wire can be repaired, it goes to the boost pump, it made it all the way here, you have power, right? You have power now, you have ground now, because you went back and checked, now you have power, you have ground, and let's say the boost pump just still doesn't work. Well, what's the only possibility? You know human factors, you already checked it, you know electrically it has power and ground. The only thing left to do is change the actual boost pump. Okay, that means mechanical. Those are the three ways actually uh, that the boost pump or any electrical circuit, such as a light bulb, will not work. Human factors, electrical, and mechanical. There is no other way. If you know it, let me know. Thank you for listening.